<laughs> I'd actually planned on making this video, but I've recently just made some discoveries about printing geometric shapes with sharp, clean edges that uh, I really felt was worth documenting. And it just gives you a chance to see a little bit of a behind the scenes view of what goes on here when I test resins. I've been working on this shape here, which is a dovetail, and I'll just uh, spin that around so you can see that. The dovetail shape is actually a woodworking joint, and it's a classic uh, torture test, I guess, for seeing if you can get straight edges, like this first edge here that joins onto the supports, and then these very sharp angular lines. Now, most attempts to print this have worked quite well with getting these top sections right, but it's this bottom section here where you can see that there are often problems in getting a nice straight print. Now that's to do with uh, the model orientation, of course, but I've discovered that the resin actually has a lot to do with it. Now, I know that might just sound completely obvious. <laughs> so if you just want to nerd out for a few minutes, then follow along and have a look at this. This uh, dovetail joint was printed with uh, any cubic DLP Craftsman resin, which claims to be a high accuracy resin, particularly for DLP printers, but also for LCD printers. And uh, the result that I got was a little disappointing because you can see quite clearly how it's got a bent uh, lower edge there. Uh, the whole base of the print is, is bent. Now this front section here doesn't look too bad. Some of the supports have come away because I've been handling it. And by the way, all these models are post cured so that they're safe to touch. But uh, I was really disappointed with that curved edge. So what I did was I tried another test straight away and used an offset or tilted in two axes. So tilted this way and then tilted that way uh, uh, orientation to see if it would improve. But as you can see here on this front corner, it's actually become a lot worse. And uh, the bend here hasn't improved either. And if I get my straight edge like this, and place that up against there, you can see just how bad that bend is. I mean, it's really nasty. So I thought, well, maybe that gives me a good opportunity to try this new uh, Amerilabs XVN50 resin for versatile engineering. Now, I don't want this to come across as me just selling this product. I have been asked to do a review and I will do a more complete review of this later, but I thought this was a good chance to see whether this particular resin would make a difference because one of its selling points is to print straight edges. So I thought, you know what? Completely unscheduled. I'm just gonna pull it out and give it a shot. So what I did is I printed exactly the same model with exactly the same supports and I actually used the same settings. So. I used the recommended exposure settings here for the DLP resin. And then I just used exactly the same settings for the XVN50 and have a look at the difference. This front corner here is really square by comparison. So you can see there that the resin has made a significant difference. Again, I've said this is totally obvious, right? You choose different resins for different applications. But it's really hard to know exactly which resin to choose because there are so many out there. And if you don't get this sort of opportunity to test them, then, well, how would you know? Which is why I just wanted to share with you that things aren't necessarily always that easy when you're being given resins to test. There's a lot of work that goes into it. But have a look at this. Here's the bent edge. And then if I take that away, and then you compare it to that one there, you can see that that edge is much straighter. So it's been supported the same way, it's the same print, but the result is just that much better. So then I thought, can I actually improve those results even more? So if I take this one away and come up with my second test, these look very similar, but what I did with this was I played around with the supports even further to see if I could get an even squarer edge. Now these are both very good, but what I've done with this second test here on the left, well, the left as I see it, this one here, <laughs> I'll point to it, is I've changed the support orientation. If I move these a little bit further apart, I've changed the support orientation so that these supports here are actually sticking out from the corner of the print rather than sticking out from underneath it. Because something else I've been very concerned about is how do you print flat geometric sides without getting that sagging or pockmarked effect of when the supports touch the underside? Is it actually possible to support the model only from the edges and then get a really clean result? Well, we'll see that in just a moment. Now you can see here that I've, once again, I've got, I'll spin it around like this. You can see here that I've got a really nice straight edge and this top corner here is also nice and straight, but notice how the supports are coming out from the corner here 
but not from the corner on that side. So I'm just experimenting with uh, how to orient the model and how to support it uh, to see what sort of results I can get. Now, this worked out well. However, <laughs> it also took three hours. And that's because the Anycubic M7 printer that I'm using uses an intelligent release algorithm, which uh, automatically and dynamically adjusts the lift speed uh, to account for the pull forces that it's detecting on the, um, on, the, uh, on the release film. So that's actually a really handy technology, and I'll show you why right now. Three hours is a long time for this print, because this one here took a lot less. So if I take this one away, slide that one over there, this is the same orientation, but this time what I've done is I've just used the supports just underneath the edge on both sides. So you can see there, it's the same orientation. I'm still getting very good quality. I'm getting really nice straightness along the bottom edge. So that was a really welcome development. Like I've said, this front corner here is really nice and square. But the advantage of placing the supports directly underneath as opposed to on the corner is that this print here printed in one hour and 12 minutes, and this print took three hours. So the intelligent release algorithm was somehow detecting that the pull forces based on where the supports were, uh, were different, and therefore it was able to speed up the print with no noticeable loss in quality on the overall prints, which is really quite amazing. Now, having made that discovery that I can use a different resin and get a really nice straight result, uh, it's a little bit like uh, taking two steps forward and one step back because I've now noticed that I'm getting a banding effect in the print on the side. And you can see that here, these horizontal lines uh, which are appearing on the side of the print. Now, that's kind of okay because in my application, I'm actually going to use a finishing process to clean those sides off. But if you weren't going to do any sort of post finishing, then these bands here would be a bit of a problem. So if you know a little bit more about that than I do, then please let me know in the comments. Or if Amerilabs happens to be watching and they've got some tips on how to remove this banding effect in the print on these flat surfaces, then uh, well, <laughs> that would be much appreciated, thank you. But I have a feeling that it's got something to do with the flat, sharp, geometric nature of 3D resin prints. Now, if you think that that's wrong, then please, as I said, let me know in the comments. But I'll just show you this one here as a, as a comparison. This shows excellent print quality all the way around, and there's no banding effect here at all. And I have a feeling that that's because of the constantly changing surface. I don't know. Um, once again, let me know in the comments if you've got a, a theory as to why that's happening. But whenever I've printed flat faces with sharp edges, I've always struggled with getting a little bit of banding in the print. However, it's still very good. And the resin has definitely made a difference. So in this resin here, XVN50 advertises that it can print sharp, straight edges uh, more easily. Uh, yeah, I'm inclined to believe that. So the results so far have been very good. You might be wondering then, well, what about another resin? Can you get the same result with another resin? So what I've done here is I've tested any cubic uh, tough resin 2.0. There it is, written on the side there. And you can see I am also getting a very nice, sharp, clean edge along this line here, which is terrific. That's what you want to see. Now, I have started to take the supports off here because I wanted to have a look on the underside, because that's what we're going to look at very shortly. Uh, and I just wanted to have a sneak peek, but the orientation of these two models is exactly the same. In fact, they are the same model. Um, and the resin settings that I've used here are the ones which are recommended for that particular resin on the Anycubic website. So these two prints are done with me being very, very careful about where I place those supports. But what if I was to take this Tough 2.0 resin and uh, auto support it? The result is okay, but I've got this strange warped corner artifact happening here again, and the banding in the print here is significantly worse. So it's a combination of two things. Supporting the model correctly, yeah, okay, that makes sense. But resin choice also is very important, and yeah, duh, uh, that makes sense too. But it's interesting when you discover it for the first time and you think, well, um, okay, yeah, it really is a thing. So now let's have a look at the underside of the models on that flat side of the print. I've been trying to get away from using uh, supports on those flat sides because they generally leave pock marks or sag marks, which, um, are quite unsightly and they generally tend to create an uneven surface. 
So I'm gonna break these off right now, see what happens. So this is my best result here with the XVN50. Let's do that one first. Okay, so we've got pockmarks here along the edges, but they'll be sanded very lightly. That should be able to get rid of those. But when you look at the detail around the holes, these holes here have been completely unsupported. So these edges are totally unsupported. And that's actually worked out to be very smooth and flat. I'm very impressed with that. So that's a really big step forward. No supports on that underside, and that's looking really well rendered. Those corners there on those holes are looking very solid. Now let's go to the DLP resin where I first saw this curved problem happening. Let's have a look at the underside there. Okay, that's really interesting. Have a look at that. You can see here that there's almost like a like a uh, a wave or some kind of a some kind of a rounded deformation there in the bottom. You can see that in the reflection of the light. The comparison with the XVN is that the XVN is much flatter. So this first um, this first run with the DLP resin has proven to be uh, quite unsuccessful. You can see there are little crater marks. It's almost like these holes seem to be sinking into the model. So that's not a particularly convincing print, that one. <laughs> so now let's compare the Anycubic Tough 2.0 resin, which is meant to be a more versatile engineering type resin, if I can put it that way, if I can borrow a little bit of the Amerilabs language there. It was also supported exactly the same way as this one here. So it's the same model, the same support structure. Let's have a look at what the surface is like underneath. Actually, I think I know how to describe it now. It looks a little bit like pin cushioning around these holes in the base of the model. You can clearly see how there's a like a bit of a rise between each of these holes. See if I can get the light to catch that reflection, but it's definitely not as flat underneath. So it doesn't look too bad when you hold it like that. But then when you look at the underside, you can see that it is definitely not as flat. Now if I hold them side by side, you can see here that the Amerilabs, the black one, is a far superior result to the Anycubic Tough 2.0 on this side here. So what do we make of that? Is the Amerilabs XVN50 better than the Anycubic Tough 2.0? Well, for this particular application, you'd have to say yes. So that leaves us in a fairly tricky position. There are so many resins on the market. Do you say that one resin is better than the other, or do you say that it's just really difficult to find the right resin for the right application, and how much testing do you need to do? Well, I think that's really just it. There are so many resins, and you do actually need to do a lot of testing. So you can see all these tests that I've done here require a lot of effort to just get that exact result that you're looking for. So I'm hoping that uh, this little exploration of XVN50 has, uh, has helped so far. But before you go, there's one other thing that I'd like to do. So I know that the Anycubic Tough 2.0 is not the right resin to get the same sort of flatness results that I can get from the Amerilabs XVN50. And I'm just using the Anycubic Tough 2.0 as, as an example. There are lots of other resins that I could have compared this to, but we'd be here all day. But what about flexibility and toughness? Because this is meant to be tough, and the Amerilabs is also meant to be tough. Well, um, to test that, I've got my trusty vise just over here. So why don't we do that test? That's always fun. So the way I'll do this is I'll put these two pieces into the vise and we'll see how they perform. And in fact, I think I'm going to need some eye protection for that because they could explode. All right, here we go. Let's place the XVN50 in first. And here we go. I'm expecting this to flex pretty well. And you can see that that is maintaining its shape very well under pressure there. Goodness, I think I'm going to have to get out of the way here. Whoa. <laughs> okay, so, so the Amaral Labs will snap eventually. Well, yeah, you would expect that. It's been crushed in a vice. Okay, here we go with the Anycubic Tough 2.0 with the same vice test. I'm just gonna see how much this can handle. I have a feeling this is gonna break sooner, so I'm just gonna be over here. <laughs> Actually, it's handling it pretty well. But here you can see, this gives me a good opportunity just to show how rounded this bottom surface is as opposed to the flatness of the XVN50. So it really does make a difference. 
Well, I'd say that's pretty convincing too. So it's definitely a tough resume. Whoa. <laughs> okay, so I'm not really sure where that went. So you can see that both resins are tough. Both resins oh, can withstand quite a bit of punishment. So where does that leave us? Well, like I said, I wasn't planning on making this video, and uh, this is uh, a bit more of a behind the scenes style video as well, with, uh, without all the polished results and, uh, and very convincing tests. Um, but what I found was really quite significant, so I just wanted to share that in case other people have been thinking about how to get a better result when you're trying to print flat surfaces without putting supports on them so that you can avoid that uh, effect of getting pock marks or sag marks on the bottom of your flat models. Now look, there's a long way to go here, and as I said, I've still got this banding effect here in the side of the print that I'd like to try and deal with. Once again, I'd be very pleased to hear your comments uh, on how to maybe solve that. Uh, thank you, Amerilabs. Feel free to chime in. Uh, but once again, I'd like to say that this resin here, XVN50, well, it deserves your attention. If you're looking for something where you can print nice straight edges and you're looking for something with good toughness. Unfortunately, it only comes in black. Uh, it'd be nice if it came in some other colors, but they do have TGM7, and I have made a review on that, and I, that will also come out in my XVM50 review. Um, so keep that in mind. But anyway, I hope that's been helpful for you. Uh, it's just a quick insight. Um, if you have found that useful, then you know what to do. Like, comment, and subscribe. Uh, thank you so much for watching. Stay tuned for my full review 